we have the future for the Penn State wrestling team, or at least the, the schedule is out. We're going to be talking about that on the Penn State Wrestling Show and the latest opportunity to watch the future of the Nittany Lions at work. I'm Thomas Frankar. Greg Pickle, our wrestling reporter here, he's got all the information. He's going to be telling you about all of that today on the show. So welcome in, Greg. Uh, what's the last couple days, weeks been like for Penn State wrestling? What have you been following? And, uh, and generally, how you doing? Welcome to the show. I'm doing well, T. Frank. It's good to be back, and it's uh, feeling more like wrestling season outside. With each and every passing day, the temps are dropping, <laughs> yeah. and before we know it, uh, wrestling season will be here. But uh, Penn State Wrestling uh, learned its uh, Big Ten uh, schedule, uh, or at least its opponents hasn't learned the schedule yet, But so we'll get to that. But uh, the big news this week is U-20s are here, so a number of either future or or in one case, a current Nittany Lion, are competing in that freestyle event that really kind of, uh, for the most part, closes out the freestyle portion of the year for wrestling and moves us into uh, the folk style, or uh, as everyone else knows, the college portion of the year. So uh, looking forward to that, but uh, I did expect us, quite frankly, to have a few more scheduled nuggets by now, and we just don't have them. Uh, teams are really taking their time putting their schedule out, so uh, we will have to wait on some of that stuff, but we do know the Big Ten dates will get into that. But before um, we talk about that, it's definitely, like I said, U-20 season, uh, yeah. and, and like I said, a number of notable Nittany Lions uh, are getting ready to compete. Yeah, so uh, we'll get to the schedule in just a second. Let's get into that. Uh, Luke Lilladal, I know, is one of the headliners in the conversation around um, future commits. So who are you watching for in this uh, in this coming weekend? Yeah, so there are a number of uh, four uh, future Nittany Lions, if you will, and then one current Nittany Lion. Uh, some of these guys are going to be uh, current Nittany Lions as soon as, uh, as soon as this U-20 event ends because they are enrolling this year. But uh, you have Luke Lilladal at 57 kilograms, PJ Duke at 70 kilograms, Zach Ryder at 79 kilograms, uh, Josh Barr, who is the current Nittany Lion, at 86 kilograms, and then Connor, Connor Mirasola is at 92 kilograms. So there is a lot to watch over the next uh, few days. They will start this competition closer to the weekend uh, in Spain. Uh, currently, as you were recording this on September 4, uh, the women's freestyle event is going on, and then they'll move into the men's freestyle for the U20. So uh, you will have to stick with us at bluewhiteillustrated.com for the latest on that. But two things I'm really curious about, T. Frank. Number one, Luke Lilladal, as we talked about on a previous edition of the BWI wrestling show could very well be Penn State wrestling starter at 125 pounds this year so how does he look in what is yet another tune-up event essentially uh for uh his potential uh starting you know to start his career then at Penn State as a starter and then Josh Barr is a guy who we saw uh briefly last year he beat one All-American but he mostly redshirted in 2024 or I'm sorry in 2023 2024 so entering 2024 2025 I'm very curious to see what kind of uh, you know, outlook he has based on how he does at Worlds, uh, U20 Worlds, uh, going into the year. Because I think Penn State will use him this year and can mm -hmm. use him this year. Uh, but what he can do in terms of how far he can go, uh, we'll get a good first look at that at Worlds this weekend. Yeah, so what's the competition level like for these guys? Do, do you know? And then what are you hoping to learn about them in this setting and in this situation? Yeah, so it is certainly the best of the best all getting together here for the U20 Worlds in Spain. Uh, when it comes to Lil, I, I'll just go through the list here real quick, T. Frank. When it comes to Lilladal, I think obviously, you know, uh, him winning a title here would certainly uh, be the latest step in his possible cementing of a starting job in uh, the 2024-2025 Penn State wrestling lineup. For P.J. Duke and for Zach Ryder, uh, both of them have had interesting uh, – and I think you could call it unique uh, pass to this point. And so I'm just curious to see how those guys look against the best in the world. Uh, they have obviously dominated United States competition. So what do they look like when they're against the best in the world? That is what I'm watching with those two. And then with Josh Barr, uh, the question for me is, again, we saw him compete in some aspects last year, but not many. And so what does he look like as he gets ready to return to what we assume is going to be a more full-time role? And obviously freestyle is not folk style, but what does he look like on the mat uh, as he gets ready to, I'm assuming uh, what he hopes at least, is to win a job in the Penn State starting lineup. Uh, and how does that look in freestyle uh, as we get ready for the folk style season? And then with Connor Mirasola, uh, he has won everywhere he's been. And I don't think he's going to wrestle for Penn State this year. I think he's probably going to redshirt. But there is an argument to be made that if he really shines, 
it world and he comes into uh, the Lorenzo wrestling complex with a full head of steam, maybe he does end up winning a job. And so I think with all these guys, obviously you're waiting to see how far they go in terms of their bracket. But there's also, uh, you know, I think a lot of things we can learn about what their season is going to look like coming up uh, based on how they do here. Because it really, truly is the final tune up uh, before right. the college wrestling season really begins. And so that's going to be in- interesting, fascinating to watch. And Greg's going to have all of that covered at BlueWhiteIllustrated.com. If uh, you want to get in on the wrestling room and all that stuff, tell people where to follow the coverage. Yeah, so you can find it on Twitter at Greg Pickle, as you can see with the um, the tag there if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, you can also find us at bluewhiteillustrated.com over in the wrestling room uh, and also on the Lions Den message board. We will have updates. Uh, it's going to be going on during Penn State Bowling Green. Uh, but as T. Frank and I will talk about uh, a little bit later uh, today, uh, I just don't know how competitive Penn State Bowling Green is going to be, T. Frank. So yeah. I think we'll have plenty of time to follow the wrestling. Yeah, you're going to be pulling double duty. And Greg already does so many things already. So, uh, you know, appreciate everything Greg does. And, you know, if you love his wrestling content, just just know, like, it, uh, he's he's doing a lot for us at Blue White Illustrated. So one of the things we we've, haven't done this show every single week because we want to bring right. you substantive news here on the show and not just conversation and empty chatter. Because I above all, I think wrestling people are very, like, Give us the information. Give us the stuff. We want to know things. We don't need uh, you here gabbing all the time. But right. one of the things you've been following and you we've talked about is like I I thought there'd be more schedule news for like the last three weeks is what you've been telling me. Right. Um, what do you think that is? What do you think things have been a little bit slower in that particular area of our news cycle when it comes to uh, wrestling? Yeah, I'm just spitballing here, but my assumption is that the expansion of conferences, not just the Big Ten, but also across uh, college athletics, has really slowed things down. You know, when you think about putting out a winter sports schedule uh, at places where the women's uh, basketball team, men's basketball team, and the wrestling team may all share the same uh, venue, not to mention gymnastics and any other winter sports that some of these schools might have that maybe Penn State doesn't have. Uh, I just think there's a lot of coordination that goes into it. And so I think you're seeing um, the byproduct of that, which is a delayed schedule. You know, Nebraska was one of the only Big Ten schools, T. Frank, who has put on their website that they will have their wrestling schedule out soon, but they said it would be after Labor Day. Obviously, we're after Labor Day, and their schedule is still not out. So, Well, it's I still technically think- true, right? We, we are they, after they, they Labor Day. Wrong. They weren't lying. Yeah, <laughs> it could be. <laughs> it could be October. <laughs> yes. Uh, so Penn State last year it released or it received its Big Ten home and away opponents in July, mm-hmm. and it announced its official schedule the third week of October. So if you're, I think uh, over on the Lions Den message board, somebody asked how soon they expected dates to be attached to the Big Ten schedule. No time soon. No time <laughs> soon. Uh, for whatever reason, closer to uh, Halloween than Labor Day. It sounds. That is correct. Yeah, for some reason, this process takes forever every year. I do think that there is a component of it, T. Frank, that is related to the expansion of the Big Ten and some other conferences and just Mm -hmm. trying to map everything out. Uh, But also wrestling, for whatever reason, is always the last one to post their schedule. So uh, I would not get my hopes up if I was a Penn State wrestling fan for dates anytime soon. So what is the schedule? Let's go through it. Uh, talk the home and away stuff that you've got for us here because we do have those nuggets. So here to end the show, let, let's uh, lay that out for Penn State fans so they know which ones they can go see, rec hall, and maybe we could point to some BJC duels uh, yeah. during yes. this kind of uh, speculate or not speculation, the info dump you got for us here. Yeah, so the home Penn State Big Ten wrestling matches are going to be Iowa, Michigan, Michigan State, and Maryland. And on the road, Penn State will face Nebraska, Illinois, Ohio State, and Rutgers. So uh, the question really just becomes, T. Frank, we've talked about this previously. Uh, if you remember last year, the Bryce Jordan Center duel was against Rutgers on a Monday. And a lot of people were like, this is strange. Why? Why is Penn State doing this? Uh, Kale Sanderson more or less said that, by the time they got around to being able to schedule it, the Bryce Jordan Center was full on the dates of its uh, bigger matches. And so I would, uh, you would assume uh, Pat Kraft and Kale Sanderson put a plan in place after that last year to yeah. uh, make sure it didn't yeah. happen again. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. But my assumption here would be that 
Uh, obviously, the Iowa match would be the one that you would point toward uh, Bryce Jordan Center, rather. Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't fault him either if it was Michigan. But it should be one of those two. It should either be Iowa or Michigan at the Bryce Jordan Center. And if they wanted to do both, if the schedule allowed for it, Kale Sanderson talked a year ago. I guess it was two years ago at this point about being okay with possibly doing uh, two Bryce Jordan Center matches. So if you're ever going to do it, Michigan and Iowa both coming to State College would be the time to do it. You would sell it out, no questions asked. And so I'm really curious to see what they end up deciding. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, I think it's a very good home schedule after last year was a little mediocre. Uh, I think it's a good Big Ten home schedule, and I'm very curious to see in the weeks ahead here, T. Frank, what non-conference matches get added? Because Penn State, yeah. uh, we know Kale Sanderson usually mixes it up a bit. And so the teams that you might expect to be on the non-conference schedule probably won't be. And it's always fascinating to see who ends up on the schedule. But like I said, as we sit here on September 4, uh, none of those matches are out yet. Yeah, so what do you think of the uh, away schedule? And then the new look Big Ten, how do you think that's affecting the rotation here of of the teams on the schedule and, and do you find anything interesting in that part yeah the newcomers don't bring wrestling with them so that was the only good mm-hmm. news for the wrestling part of it but again i think that going back to the conversation we had before they all bring basketball both men's and women and they all bring uh men's and women's gymnastics and mm-hmm. so i just think the newcomers in the big 10 aren't necessarily affecting the wrestling schedule in terms of opponents but they are impacting it in terms of the way this whole thing is cycling through and being released and being set up and things like that um just because you're adding uh not necessarily a wrestling but you're adding winter sports so they have there's a lot of maneuvering and even though rec hall is obviously the home of Penn State wrestling, there are a lot of places that don't have the luxury of having a specific uh, gymnastics and wrestling venue, and then obviously a basketball venue. So I, I do think that plays a pretty big role in how long this stuff is taking to come out. But in terms of the road schedule, um, I think it's fairly uh, you know favorable to Penn State. Obviously, a lot of Penn State fans will travel to Rutgers and Ohio State. Those are drives for most Penn State fans. Ohio State, obviously, a little bit further, but yeah. certainly doable. Rutgers, absolutely doable for anybody that lives in the Mid-Atlantic. Um, and then Nebraska and Illinois, I think it will be good for Penn State to get to those venues. They have some kids on the roster from those areas. And they, uh, you know, obviously uh, love to mix up uh, Big Ten competition. And Nebraska and Illinois are two teams they did not face um, a year ago. So I really think that... It is a good schedule uh, competition-wise. It's a good schedule in terms of trying to defend the Big Ten regular season title, uh, and especially on the home side of it. It's a very good schedule for Penn State fans. So check all of Greg's work out at BlueWhiteIllustrated.com. Always appreciate people supporting the channel here on the Blue White Illustrated YouTube channels. We grow this wrestling show uh, as we get into the actual season. Eventually, we'll have a lot of stuff to talk about and the guy to go to for analysis and breakdowns and having all the facts Greg Pickle. Always appreciate you, Greg. Thanks, Steve Frank.